Hey, what's up guys? Massive Furry here. I'm Honey Bear Art and this is how to make a fursuit head. <laughs> We will be making an elastic foam base with a movable jaw. So what you want to do is to start out, measure your head around the forehead and around the chin over the top of the head. Add a tiny bit extra just so that you have a seam allowance for when you sew it all together and you're not cutting off your circulation. Um, the second piece you want to add quite a bit more to, that's the part that goes around the back of your head. This is because we're going to use Velcro to make it adjustable so that your friends can try it on or, you know, if you feel it's too tight you can loosen it up a bit. It's the Velcro, pretty much where I'm showing you right now. Um, make it so that the hooks are facing inwards and the loops are facing outwards. You'll understand a bit later on in the video, but it just has a stronger hold on the other way around. So this is Creepy Harold, he's my kawaii spongebob look-alike, and as you can see on our beautiful model here, that's pretty much how your elastic is going to sit around your head. Pin the top with an overlap and pin the sides so that it's comfortable. Let's get into what you're going to need. Scissors, pins, velcro, the elastic you did before, and a chunky boy. Also a coffee. A coffee is required all the time. I'm just gonna drink this now. Set your sewing machine to zigzag mode, length two, width three. Once you've pinned it all up, make sure that it's all good, fits on your head, and then start on top. Make sure you're using heavy duty or upholstery thread for this part, just cause you don't want this to break. Then basically just go ham with it, like go forward and backwards as many times as you want until it feels sturdy. Then repeat the same on the overlap. Then sew the sides exactly the same way. Just go ham. So I'm going to upload this video series episodes daily for the next week. And then after that, I'm going to go to a regular upload schedule of a video every fortnight. I want to bring a bit of comedy and creativity to this channel. I did a degree of digital media and Ever since I've been making fursuits, I haven't been able to explore that passion, so I kind of want to bring it out in this channel. But that's enough about me, so let's get back into this. We want to do the stretch test. This is because this elastic is going to go through hell and back. In its lifetime, it is going to be stretched hundreds of times. Every time you put that head on, it's getting stretched. Pin the Velcro where it needs to be. The loops facing out, away from your head, and the hooks facing in towards your head. This is just because it's stronger that way. You also might find that you get a bit of fur caught in the Velcro. Make sure that occasionally you just give it a little brush out with a fine tooth comb just to give it its stick back. I like to use two separate pieces of the hooks just because if one fails, the other one is the backup. I like to place these two contact points a little bit apart from each other just to accommodate people with big heads who need that extra stretch. Then seal the edge of the elastic along where the velcro attaches with a zigzag stitch. This is just to stop fraying. Then pop your boy back onto a straight stitch. Make sure you set width to zero. I've done that a few times where I don't, and it breaks the needle. Um, <laughs> and then we just want to straight stitch all the way around the edges of each of the Velcro pieces. 
Um, in the corners and all of the starts and finishes, I do a forward and reverse. That just locks the thread in. It's very big tip. Do it every time. It will stop your thread from unraveling. But seriously though, do it every single time. I know it's not shown, but do exactly the same thing to the small pieces of Velcro. Do the stretch test again, because the worst thing is when your Velcro is too weak, you might have to replace it for something better. Now we're up to cutting foam. Get one of these little cheap meat cutter electric knife things. I got this one from Kmart, it was 10 bucks, and it does wonders. Also grab a few pairs of scissors, some pins, hot glue gun, maybe heat mat if you need it, lots of glue sticks, and a heck load of foam. I got the foam from Clark Rubber, it was an off-cut bag for 15 bucks. Super good when you're starting out, you can also buy big sheets. Then just pin your elastic to a head base, you can buy them from a craft store, online, Lots of stuff. Um, you can even make one out of foam. I like to start on the muzzle first. Grab a big hunk of foam that goes from your human nose all the way to the end of where you want the muzzle to be. Grab some masking tape, trace out a pattern. I like to use a half pattern so that I can reflect it. It gives really good symmetry and it's probably something you should use all the time. Symmetry is really important when making fursuits, especially on the heads. Keeping symmetry just gives your suit that extra level of niceness. Unless, of course, you specifically want your suit to have something like an inflected or raised eyebrow or a snarl on one side. That sort of asymmetry is fine, but I'm probably going to sound like a parrot. Symmetry, symmetry, symmetry. Symmetry. Do it. Do it! Now sit back and relax and watch this foam sculpting time lapse.
Thanks for watching Fuzzbots. I plan to upload new content every fortnight, so please subscribe and ring that bell. And don't forget to absolutely obliterate that like button. Check out my website and Twitter in the description for all of my latest fursuit projects.